Weakness is pervasive in the global economy. Boarded up stores are so common, entire industries are disrupted. But is there anything that will change this pattern? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I've got some information related to the emerging markets. And of course, will the risk that's there, that's obviously present in emerging markets, make its way to the US? The US dollar having the monopoly, having the reserve currency, is so important, so integral to what happens all around the world. And that certainly in previous cycles has a major impact on what happens in the United States. It definitely has an effect as it relates to imports and exports, geopolitical problems as well. We've seen all types of different crises over the years. And this right here is something that we need to be focused on because everybody seems to be looking at the most obvious issues when you have the store closure and you have their job loss and you have the stock market they're obviously doing very well that that's where all the focus is but what about how all of the dots connect that's what i want to talk about here a little bit i've got information on that and then some other stuff you got to see let's get into it right away some of the charts I'm going to show you today have small fonts, so I'm going to describe it as best I can. But of course, as always, I will include the links in the description so you can follow up, you can check it out, or potentially you can pause this and maybe zoom in or do what you got to do. But look at this. We're looking at the relative vulnerability of emerging markets. There is a lot on here, obviously. I'm not going to be able to cover it all, but I noticed a few things. For example, Argentina is one that people should be watching. I've been talking Talking about Argentina on this channel for a while, I said specifically that the currency would continue to depreciate and that has obviously happened. Look at the inflation rate right here. It is year over year, 46%. It's destroyed. You cannot contain a situation when you have 46% inflation. It's already done. That, you know, depending on the different calculation, different definition, that is considered hyperinflation. You can't do that. Okay, if it was at that level for some reason for just a month or three months or what have you, that, okay, fine. But you can't persistently have such high levels of inflation and somehow turn it around. They usually default on their debt. Oops, you know that's happened. You know that the way it works time and time again as all of these countries, their currency is devalued, whether they're doing that intentionally or whether it happens because of external events and that brings up about issues within the country doesn't matter. You're also looking at Turkey on here. They're dealing with some issues themselves. The central bank one day drops interest rates all the way down so significantly, and then the next day it brings them up rapidly. It's it's a mess what's going on there in terms of what we're seeing along with the central banks. You can also take a look at these here and realize how bad the debt situation is, not just for Argentina, which as a percentage of the GDP, 95%. Brazil is there as well, 93%. And you look at other things that have been happening there. There's, there's so much on here. As a percentage of the GDP just gives you an idea because certain economies are obviously bigger than others, but on its own, of course, that's going to be an issue um, in, in their own way. Now, I have some more info. Let's look at it here. Economies recovering at different speeds. So you can look around and on the right hand side, by the way, the blue area that's quarter two and the orange area is quarter three. And Argentina is right here, definitely taking a big hit. Uh, the Philippines right there, Chile and Colombia and, and so many others. It's there's there's definitely a big disparity in what we can see with these countries and then you compare that to others that seemingly have done better but throughout 2020 it is clear that these economies here have been hit hard and are still continuing to really feel the effects of what has happened the economy is not the stock market and especially it's not the tech shares of the stock market it is something entirely different and when you look at how these businesses have been unable to operate if you're not a dot-com essentially
eventually. Yeah, you've got some serious problems. Then you have the monopolies, the big companies out there who are allowed to remain open. Yeah, Best Buy is able to remain open. All the big boys are able to remain open. They're going to do better than a lot of these mom and pop shops. And unfortunately, we see that trend. Public debt is rising significantly across the board. Left hand side, you can see Argentina, then we have Brazil and India and Hungary and so on. This is just pulling information from that, from the IIF. But it just shows you that these countries here are potentially some of the weakest links globally. Now you look at these, the reason I mentioned this, I know there's a, there's a lot of criticism here on the channel from what I see. What am I supposed to do with this information? People don't don't want to actually connect the dots and they aren't able to look into it on a deeper level but look you start seeing this what happens with a country that starts to weaken you look at Argentina there's a serious situation going on what do they export what do they import what big businesses operate there and where is the default risk the most these are potential things that you can be profiting off of them or you can go in the other way maybe you have investments there maybe that's time to sell all of this is information and you have to use it i can't tell you that because if i specifically state okay you should sell this it's that's financial advice and people are constantly they constantly give it and it's so unwise to do that not just for the in my opinion it's morally incorrect to do so everybody must actually do what they think is the right thing and not just take advice from some random person no you got to know you got to be empowered on that and that that's just the way i look at it anyway let's take a look at the next chart Emerging markets are vulnerable to currency volatility. Again, we've got Argentina on that left-hand side. It's just broken down here. NFC debt in foreign currency as a percentage of the NFC debt. And then on the orange area is the government debt in foreign currency as a percentage of the government debt. Regardless, in the case of Argentina and Turkey, it is really, really bad. And that just gives you an idea of what's going on here. I mean, Argentina is right now, we're looking at uh, over 60%. So that just shows you definitely a problem but i know that there are some people a few years ago who were saying there's nothing going on in argentina you don't have to worry but today it is a different story political risk in latin america is relatively high and you could look at that political risk scale from zero to ten broken down here mexico brazil argentina and so on right hand side overall vulnerability ranking it just shows you there on that scale I just wanted to give you this information. You do what you want with it. I hope it is somewhat useful because I know that a lot of the times I'm covering information about the United States. That's where most of my subscribers are from, but I got people from all over the world. And of course, we need to know what's happening all over the world because it is so integral and does affect everybody no matter where they are. I'm showing you here the Freddie Mac 30-year fixed mortgage rate, but ultimately what I'm trying to show you is interest rates and when you have cheap interest rates you have speculation this chart goes back from 2007 up until the present we're looking at record lows again and again and again and again for mortgage rates and when you have this of course people are going to refinance i understand that it makes a lot of sense for most people and then you've got people getting into homes bigger and more expensive than they normally would this is clearly present in some of those hot zones where people will literally buy anything and there's a lot of paperwork that's being forged and uh, making it happen and this is what we're deal with, dealing with today in this bubble speculative mania this is a very good infographic there's actually too much for me to cover but you know I think it's important. I think the data in here is important. So I will highly recommend that you check it out. Link in the description, frugal or frivolous. And you could look at the buying patterns that have been changing, what people are doing today that they weren't doing before, things that are looking a lot different today as it relates to shopping patterns, where people are putting their money and so on. Uh, you know, there's just too much to kind of go through but uh, definitely check it out wanted to recommend it to you let's move on 
So in all of that, in all of which we've been seeing in 2020, which I'll show you the unfortunate economic aspects, the poverty and so on in just a second here, but there have been hedge funds that were performing so poorly 2019, 2018, and now today earning billions of dollars. They basically just went all in, they multiplied what they had, they leveraged, they did everything, and as a result, some of them have done very, very well. Well, of course, they're needing to take that extra risk today because they've been performing so poorly in this period of time. But if you want to read about their gains and so on, this is the one. I just simply wanted to note this because there's a huge disparity going on in between certain groups, whether that's, you know, you're looking at the stock market versus the economy or other things. It's definitely not a good situation today. Then we have this article talking about ESG, among other things, but it's just so ridiculous. It's so silly. I want to use another word, but anyway, they call this environmental stocks, right? ESG related assets managed to outperform in many pockets of the market during volatility, proving skeptics wrong, right? Okay, so they actually outperformed, as you can see, global environmental stocks outperformed global stocks significantly this year. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just by buying these stocks, you have done better than the MSCI All Country World Index. I mean, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. You can help the planet and all until you look at the stocks that make up ESG funds. Guess what? It's just a bunch of tech stocks. That's right. It's just a bunch of tech stocks. It's Amazon. It's Apple. It's all of those. It's ridiculous. And they keep talking about it. And the propaganda is so persistent. It's so persistent. And yet it doesn't stop. And never, it will never stop, apparently. Here, I just wanted to highlight the fact that, as they say, for many bars, Christmas could be the last call. The U.S. bar industry feels the pain of the holiday without the merry. Many different industries have been taken out, but certainly the bars, the restaurants, they just can't do it. A lot of them, of course, when you have takeout and so on, that could be a source of revenue but not what they had before and the bars you know it's just unfortunate for them they can't do business and so many have already closed imagine as we move into 2021 what it's going to look like the numbers are going to be so staggering Nearly 8 million people have sunk into poverty since June after having spent the $1,200 checks that the government gave most Americans in the spring and $600 a week supplemental jobless benefits that expired in July. They give you some examples here of individuals that are unfortunately not doing well. The government cannot simply supply more money, more checks to individuals, and that's going to fix it. Look, is another $1,200 going to fix it? Is a $2,000 check going to fix the problem? No, it might temporarily bail somebody out, but that's probably just going to be used to pay already existing bills. So it will be evaporated instantaneously for some, and you're looking at a situation that it doesn't actually get fixed by the government because it looks like they've done enough damage as it is. Cars line up early to benefit from the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona on Christmas Eve. So many examples of this going on all around the United States today. And then we have this example out of Chicago. Line stretches 15 blocks as actress Taronda Jones and her foundation give away toys food in West Garfield Park. Um, there have been so many acts of kindness throughout this period, throughout 2020. It's been amazing. It's been amazing in that sense to see how many people are willing to go far beyond what they ever thought they would need to do or have to do and so on. That's been good, but the situation that many are going through is truly unfortunate on many levels. And so that's what we got today. If you found the video informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. So I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, you're interested in e-commerce, 
If you want to know things for free, not have to pay anything, well, then you could check out my free e-course at the Amazon GPS. Dot com. If you want to understand the financial system, I've got two books that will break it down so simply, so easily for you. Definitely check them out at the link in the description. And if you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? So much detail for you, breaking down what you need to know today to help you out. Click on it and I'll see you there.